Welcome back to our second last video in our triad series. This video we're gonna go over a little bit of a more advanced exercise for you guys. So far we've only really looked at the two basic exercises where we have our triad type and we're going up the string groups. Like so, for example for open minor, or we have the one also where we go um, across the string groups. So I'll do closed major here. And you can see we travel in one section across and then you're free to go up that final string group but you go across. So in this video I want to do something a little more complicated because I worked on those exercises for quite a while and they got me quite far but I think at a certain point I needed something more, another way to connect the triads so that it's more holistic on the guitar and we're not constantly thinking of one key at a time and we have more flexibility in transitioning between the triads. So this exercise, I got the idea from Miles Okazaki um, from his book, Fundamentals of Guitar, one of my favorites, has tons of useful information. I'd highly recommend buying it and just going through it yourself. Um, but there is one, uh, ex one exercise here with the triads that I thought was perfectly brilliant for where we're at in our triad development. Um, so I'll show you how it works. So first thing we have to do is draw 12 circles and connect them all together. So that will be one for every pitch. All right, now I will fill in the pitches completely at random. I don't want to create any sort of patterns. I mean, you can if you want, but the idea of this is that you're going to be doing a lot of uh, changes that you normally won't do in a song and it'll, it'll form some new pathways on the fretboard and in your brain just how to connect to different chords. So you'll notice that I used flats for all of the notes here um, that are accidentals. You can feel free to work on sharps if those are your weakness but I know that most guitar players their weakness is flats so it's a good idea to practice thinking of chords in the flat keys. Okay from here we have to make a couple of decisions to start the exercise. So the first decision we have to make is triad type. So this could be major, minor, diminished, augmented, uh, or sus, and open or closed. So now that we've got that set up, we can actually do uh, a kind of basic version of the exercise where you want to start with it. So I'm going to pick major closed because that's where we started in our triad journey um, and just for simplicity's sake as well. So you can see here I've picked uh, string two, three, and four, and I've picked root position A major. So basically what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to read from left to right, top to bottom, our chart. So let me draw an arrow to show which way I'm going to do this one. So here, here, and here. Now, the tricky part is you have to voice lead. What that means is you have to go to the closest inversion of the next triad. So the first one, pretty easy. A to B flat, that's one fret apart. So I can just start with my A triad and then go up to B flat. If I want to make it sound a little more interesting, uh, I can choose to go down because I like to avoid parallel motion when possible because it's kind of just too easy just to slide around like that. So I'm going to actually choose to go down here. So I'm now in second inversion of B flat. All right, the next triad is E. So I have to think where is going to be the closest E. I have two options, up or down, to find it. So if I go up, I'm going to be in this first inversion pretty good because I moved two frets, one fret, and three frets. If I choose to go down, I choose, I, I'm going to go here, and it's going to actually do the same. So this one's going to move three frets, this one's going to move two frets, and this one's move one fret. Um, so I have to use some other thinking to decide which one I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose to go up because I might run out of space if I'm this low on the guitar already, and I have to go down. So let's go back up. So now I'm here on E. 
Next, I'm going to go to A flat, which is, oh, there's a common tone. So the, the G sharp and the E triad is the same note as the root of A flat, because G sharp and A flat are the same. So I'm just gonna switch that, and I'm in A flat. And so on and so forth, until you finish the whole sequence. So, let's see what that sounds like. So we've got A, B flat, E, A flat, next line, D flat, B, uh, let's go up this time, E flat, F, G, again I'm avoiding parallel motion, I could have gone up like that, so G, D, G flat, and finally we have, let's go here, C, so that's the whole thing. Um, that would be the simplest kind of version of this exercise. Choose different string groups, so I would then go ahead and do the same thing on the first string group. So I'd go A, B flat, E, etc, etc. You can do string group uh, 3, 4, 5, and then 4, 5, 6, and that would be awesome. To change it up a little bit, what we can do is, instead of going this way through the cycle, let's change direction. Let's go from the top down. And that will give you completely new transitions. So instead of having to write a whole nother set of notes, you can just change direction. So that's kind of cool. Um, so once you're done all of the string groups and you've kind of gone some different directions around the cycle, you are then free to change triad type. So we can do minor or diminished or augmented. Um, once you have kind of exhausted those, it gets harder. So let's take a look at the whiteboard again and figure out what to do next. And now we're going to add a new rule or a new way to do this exercise. We're going to use more than one triad type. Got a nice example here. Let's do major, minor, and then augmented, let's do, because that sounds fun. So what does that mean? That means we have to maintain this pattern while we go through this cycle in whatever direction we go. So just to change it up, let's go up this time, left to right. So we'll start here. So to give an example of this one, let's start with that major. So major, G major, and this time I'm going to do open triads, and I'm going to do string groups, or the, the, the low string group here, the one that I, I like a lot because it sounds really good, is going to be string 6, string 4, and string 3. So there's our G major, uh, and we're going to go up to D flat, so it's going to be a D flat triad, but because we have our new pattern, D flat is going to be minor. So I have to figure out where is the closest flat minor triad and again we have two options we can go up or we can go down um, in this case I think I like going down better all right next one is gonna be a but this time it's gonna be augmented that's pretty easy because we have a common tone so we know it has to be here if you know your a augmented triads uh, from here, we're going to D, and we're returning back to major. And actually, that is a really nice sounding sequence. See, you can just find really nice um, chord progressions by doing this. Completely random notes. So let's, I just want to do that one more time. G, D flat minor, A augmented, D major. We're going to B minor, B flat augmented, G flat major. Flat minor, uh, E augmented. Uh, let's go. I think I'm gonna choose this one. That seems the closest. C major. That's nice. F minor. That's nice. And then A flat augmented. Oh, we already have a common tone. Perfect. 
there we go. That one worked quite well, actually. Uh, and that's kind of the fun part about doing these exercises, is you'll find some cool combinations. Final addition to our exercise, just to make it, you know, a little, little harder, um, we're going to allow different string groups. So you saw in all the examples so far, I've maintained the string group and I've just been moving up and down. It gets a little trickier when you're allowed to cross string groups um, because the voice leading is then not just going side to side, like it's also going up and down. So you have to think in a different direction. So let's try that as our last example. So you can see, I want to go right to left, starting top to bottom. And I think I will use the major minor augmented again, because that was kind of cool. Uh, and this time I'm just going to pick a random spot to start and then try to voice lead from there. So we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to start A flat major. Uh, let's not start in root position. How about A flat major um, here? So I've open triad again, I've chosen. Just because I like how they sound. All right, so A flat to E minor. So I stayed on the same strings there. To B flat augmented. Let's go, that's a pretty easy switch. To A major. All right, I've switched string groups now. Uh, to F minor. E flat augmented to where are we? B major to D flat minor to C augmented to G flat major. Let me go back up. I'm running out of room. Major to D minor, and finally to G augmented. All right, you can see that was a little trickier. Makes you think a little bit more when you have complete freedom of mobility on the guitar neck. So that is a, a very solid triad workout. If you get tired of that, all you have to do is change the notes in the circles, and you have a completely new exercise or a completely new series of chord changes and patterns that can happen. So it's, it's months of practice if you want it to be, um, until you can just blast through the triads knowing where every single inversion is on every single part of the neck. Like you could focus and say, you're gonna start triads way up here just to work on this part of the neck because maybe you're not so familiar with that. I mean, the possibilities are endless. I can work on this one quite a bit, so I think I'm gonna be doing that in the next few weeks. So that ends our video on the advanced triad workout. Hopefully you got some information out of it. Hopefully it gives you something kind of interesting to practice and a little more fun than just running uh, the key centers up and down the neck because that can get tiring pretty quickly. Um, if you have any questions about it, please feel free to comment below. Send me a message. I'll be happy to answer. Um, let me know how it goes. If it goes well, if you get something out of it, I'd be happy to hear. All right, so we got one more video coming up about triads and then that's it. So we'll see you then.